And Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Hi, this is John Stemkowski, and it's so good to be back with you today for the next in our series of Encouraging Words. Today, I want to talk to you about a really important word in the Bible. In fact, a case could be made, I suppose, that it's one of the most important, and that word is faith. Faith. I want to share with you what faith is, from whence it comes, where we place it, how we exercise it and use it, and what the results are from living a faith-filled life. So we're going to look into God's Word today, and we're going to look at four scriptures. Each one is just a single verse from the New Testament, all of them from the New Testament. And let's examine together right now and discover what God and His Word has to say to us about this important subject, faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In that first scripture in the book of Hebrews, it says to us very clearly, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when we consider what faith really is, I suppose the very first thing we could say is that it's substantive. It's substantive. And I recognize that this is tough for a lot of people to understand because it seems to be, for many, so esoteric. But the Word of God tells us faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. It is, in fact, substantive, and the reason is that you can see that a person's actions, their thoughts, their decisions, and their behavior are motivated by what's inside. And what's inside is faith. It is the substance, the substantive nature of faith, that it's, it's tangible. It's something you can grip inside that has uh, directed and motivated the actions of countless biblical characters. Ones that come to mind right now are ones that I think are really, really ap applicable for today. People from whom we can learn a great lesson. It's a story in the Old Testament concerning three Hebrew children. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And there was a circumstance where the king, Nebuchadnezzar, who was a wicked king, had declared himself God. And he ordered the people to bow before him and to, and to recognize him as a deity and to call him God. And these three Hebrew children, who knew the one true God, decided they weren't going to do that, and they said, We're sorry, O king, we will not ascribe deity to you, only to the one true God. And he was, as you can imagine, very upset about this, and he said, Well, if you don't ascribe deity to me, I'm going to throw you in the fire. And he did. He heated up a, a furnace, uh, tremendously hot, and he threw these three Hebrew children into the fire. Now, much to his surprise, he saw them walking around. And it's a great story, which I won't fully unpack for you. But later, his uh, servant said to him, didn't we throw three people in the fire? And the king said, yes. And they said, there's four walking around down there. It's a marvelous story of God's salvation for them as Jesus himself appeared in that fiery furnace. But let's examine that once Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had made their declaration that uh, we will not bow down to you, O king. And the king said, I'll take your life, I'll throw you in the fire. Here is a statement of faith, motivated by faith, substantive faith, tangible faith, that they had in God himself. It was very well placed. And here is what they said. O king, our God is able 
to deliver us. But if not, yet will we praise him. Let me say that again. O king, our God is able to deliver us. We know he is. But if not, if he decides not to, yet we will praise him. And I think that is so applicable for us as believers today because there's a lot of fear. Even believers, I'm astonished actually sometime at the level of fear that I see in people over the pandemic, over economics, over political upheaval, all kinds of things. And it really is, is inappropriate for the person of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Another character that comes to mind is Abram, who got a new name, Abraham, and was known as the father of nations. Abraham uh, had a conversation with God, and he was challenged to leave his homeland, which was called the Ur of the Chaldees, and to go out. And he decided to do it without even knowing where he was going. Now, there are a lot of people who say this, and I want to bring this to your attention because it's a little askew. People will say, seeing is believing. Well, it's not true. Seeing is seeing, and believing is believing. And Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. In that second scripture out of the book of Romans, we use just the last little piece of that scripture where it says, God has given us a measure of faith. And one of the questions I wanted to answer for you is, from whence faith comes? Where do we get it? From where does it come? How do we acquire it? And the truth is that faith, even the faith to believe in God, is a gift from him. It's a gift from him just as though life is. He breathes into us and gives us freely a gift, a measure of faith. And then he gives us the opportunity to exercise that faith. There are a number of people who say, well, I don't have very much faith, or I'm not sure that I have any faith. But God says he's given us a measure of faith. So it's there. It's a matter of recognizing it, a matter of using it. And then in terms of degrees, Jesus took that uh, protest on when someone said, I don't have much faith. He said, faith even the size of a mustard seed even the size of a mustard seed, properly exercised, can move a mountain. So where does faith come from? It comes from God himself, from his heart, from his nature. He places it inside of us and gives us a measure of faith. In that next scripture in 2 Corinthians, it says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Let me say that again. We walk by faith and not by sight. And one of the questions I wanted to address is, how do we apply faith? How do we exercise it? Well, this is one of the best directives that the Scripture has to offer. We walk by faith. We are motivated by faith. We make decisions by faith. And a lot of times we can't see because it says we walk by faith and not by sight. Let me propose something to you today. Almost all of us long for sight. We want sight so badly. We want to see what's around the corner, what's around the next corner, what's ahead. We'll go to great lengths to find that out. And yet, if it were good for us, God would give us a road map. But he hasn't. He's asked us to walk by faith and not by sight, and faith in him and faith in his word. And his word says in another place of itself that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It illuminates just a few steps so that we can walk by faith. My dear friend, if we had a blueprint, if we had a full roadmap of our lives, of every event that was going to take place, either good or bad, but certainly on the bad side, we couldn't handle it. We'd be full of so much anxiety and fear and consternation, and yet God appeals to us and he says, walk by faith and not by sight. So the way we apply it is to do it, to walk in it. And when we do, it's like a muscle. It strengthens. And then we become accustomed to God's faithfulness and his reward, and we continue to walk by faith and not by sight. 
that fourth scripture, also from the book of Hebrews, which is known as the faith chapter, by the way. It's full of great stories of faith and people who followed God in faith. But that scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. And the word impossible appears very, very rarely in the scriptures, very rarely. The only other place I can think of at the moment is where it says that these things are impossible with man, but all things are possible for God. It's a rare word that appears in the scripture and one to which we should pay attention when the writer of Hebrews says, without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. There are two components there that we are admonished to believe. Number one, that God is, that God is. And my question for you today is, do you believe in God? And perhaps you might say yes, but I would further ask the question, at what level do you really believe in God? Do you believe in him enough to have faith and confidence that he can direct you by his spirit? He can lead you by his word. Believe that he is. And secondly, that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I've come to realize and understand in my own life that God generally does not answer the casual inquiry. He answers diligent seeking. When we get serious, when we get on our face before God, if you please, and say, I've got to have an answer. There's an Old Testament story of Jacob wrestling with an angel, and in that story, he says, I will not let you go until you give me a blessing. That's the sort of diligent seeking that we are called to do, that we would uh, not only believe that God is and that he's the rewarder, but he is the rewarder of whom? Those who diligently seek him. Great scripture, great promise, good for us to know, good for us to understand and to walk in. Now, we've taken two passages today from the book of Hebrews, and I'd like to insert this little encouragement for you. I would like you to take your time, your private time, and read the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. It's known as the faith chapter, and it's full of stories of what we call the heroes of faith, biblical heroes of faith, who understood what I'm proposing to you today. They understood what faith was. They understood from whence it came. They understood how to walk in it and exercise it. And they understood the rewards of leading a faith-filled, faith-driven life. I want you to know all that too, and we can only go so far here, but take out Hebrews 11, and on your own time, read that entire chapter. I think you'd be very blessed by it. In each one of these videos, we select a song for you. And today, we're going to select a song that we recorded some time ago in a series of praise albums called Give Him Praise. And I actually wrote this song, and it's based on that scripture, Hebrews 11:6. without faith it is impossible to please him. Now, this song kind of covers all those components, and it says that a life of faith will bring forth certain manifestations. In the 44 years of Celebrant Singers Ministry in over 100 countries, I have seen things that should have been impossible, absolutely impossible. And yet, as an exercise of faith, putting faith, trust, and confidence in God, he decided to show himself mighty and strong and make the seemingly impossible possible. And out of that, he gets great glory. So today, I want to encourage you to be a person who says, I will live a life of faith. Open your heart. Listen to this song that the celebrants are singing called Without Faith. It is impossible to please him. Take a listen. Thank you. 
His grace through your faith that you came to the Lord, and by faith that you walk in His way. It's by faith that the mountains of life are removed, and by faith that you stand in the storm, and by faith you believe though the clouds hide the sun. Faith, simple faith like a child. You know, I really love that song and I enjoy that song. And I suppose in part, it takes me down memory lane because I remember writing it and I remember uh, in my own heart seeing what I thought were things that God had in store for us down the road. And yet they seemed so impossible, but they were real to me. And God, by his grace, allowed them to be real to me in the realm of faith. And then we trusted, we persevered and went forward. And it's been miraculous. And so I got a little, my little uh, wet eyes here, a little teary, as I was thinking about all the things that God has done in the work of celebrant singers in my own life since that song was written. But I hope you enjoyed it too, and I hope it touches your heart. And here's what I'd really like to put forth for you today. I would like you to consider very strongly this very day deciding to be a person of faith, Say with me, I will be a person of faith. Let's say that again. I will be a person of faith. Take God at his word. Take God at his word. Take his word. Look at the promises and say, I choose to believe that you are God and that you're the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. Hence, I will be a person of faith who diligently seeks you. My dear friend, I, I hold forth to you what really is the great key of life. Put your trust, your faith, your confidence in God. Never take your eyes off of him. When you pray, release your faith to him and expect 
his reward in return. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you and praise you that the way you relate to us is amazing. You even give us the faith necessary to believe in you. And then you give us opportunity after opportunity to exercise that faith, to grow in our faith, to be strengthened in our faith. And Father, I know that we are living in challenging times, difficult times, and they could become yet even more difficult. And I believe you want us to let our roots go down deep in you by faith so that those things can never be shaken and never taken from us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the measure of faith. Thank you for being faithful and rewarding us. And now, dear friend, I pray for you. I pray something that only the Holy Spirit can do, that he will quicken inside of your heart and ignite that faith that is already there that God has given to you, that he would ignite that faith, cause it to come on fire, and you would find a deeper level of faith, trust, and confidence in God than you ever have before. Without faith, dear friend, it's impossible to please him. Decide today to be a God pleaser. Holy Spirit of God, please minister and call forth this faith, this gift in the life of our friend. We praise you and bless you and thank you for hearing our prayer. And we pray these things with gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thanks so much for being with us today. We've enjoyed, as always, being with you. And we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email or make a comment below. And if these videos are encouraging to you, please take opportunity to share them with your family and friends. And as always, should you need prayer for anything, let us know that too, would you? And we will pray for you. God bless you today. And we'd look forward to seeing you next time on Encouraging Words. Now, for the first time in their 45-year history, read the compelling story of this miracle-filled ministry and the man behind it. This inspiring story of faith and courage will deeply touch your life. It's by His grace through your faith that you came to the Lord and by faith that